Why did you join the military? Well, uh, you know, uh, there were a lot of friends or relatives who volunteered for the service when the Korean War broke up. And I was among this group. But, uh, however, you know, I was already committed. So, I chose not to go with uh, my uh, friends. So, I, I, I said, uh, I'm going to wait until they draft me. During that time, they were, uh, Uncle Sam was drafting. So, finally, I went and got the greetings from Uncle Sam, you know, to, uh, going to uh, serve in the military. I wanted to join um, to serve. The service was not to protect the flag, but to establish myself as a lawyer amongst the indigenous peoples. Well, if I didn't join, they were going to draft me anyway, so I decided to join. Me and my brother, my brother, brother Myron, we went and signed up together. And uh, they took him right there and they uh, left me for eight months uh, because... However, not all the Native Americans share the same experience. Military, because, because of my father. My father was in the military. And, uh, and he told me a story about this. He said, he said this is not our, our way of going over. He said, this is not our job, but we, we, we went in, went ahead and go in. This is not our fight. This is not our Indian fight. Were you ever discriminated against? No, I didn't experience anything like that. <clears throat> Not me. Uh, you know, every once in a while somebody called me chief. And I, you know, I corrected them. You know, don't call me chief. You know, just rich. Yeah, so, yeah. But not very often. And after they knew you for a while, they realized that you didn't put up with that. Again, not all Native Americans had the same experience. Uh, well, when you go through boot camp, you know, it's always hot. You know, I, went, I went to Camp Pendleton. And uh, over there, they, they told me how to get out there and do uh, rain dance. <laughs> that was that was to me that was you know, discriminating because they got in front of everybody. Everybody's out there watching me, you know, and I'd get out there in front of everybody and dance. How did war change your perspective? You know, relatives, my uh, uh, good friend Prentice, come back all wounded. And, you know he's crazy. You know he's, he was uh, 11 B uh, infantryman, and. Uh, you know, him and I palled around together, and uh, he was a pretty tough guy, I thought. But it made him even more, more crazy, you know. He, uh, he was taking pills for, he was paid, he had shrapnel in the, in the ankle. They sent him back for, uh, uh, to be uh, recouped himself, you know, himself, and he, uh, he was just, uh, he was out of control. And uh, he went back. And he uh, uh, got wounded again. He got uh, in an ambush, uh, three of them. And they, uh, the, the other two got killed. And Prentice got uh, shrapnel in his head. And it, it even changed him more. That uh, he'd uh, drink and, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't a good friend anymore. He was just too crazy. So. What was one of your first experiences in Vietnam? We landed in Vietnam and, uh, uh, we landed at Tom Sanu, uh, Air Base, and we're under fire. And I, I can remember uh, the plumes of smoke in the distance and flashes, and I remember the smell of like kerosene. That's the best thing I can uh, uh, describe. And I think there was a Navy man that had a flashlight, and he told us, hit the tarmac running, hit the tarmac running, follow my light. So we ran down off the, the tarmac into uh, barracks, I remember, and he says, he's hollering at us as we're running, and we're carrying somebody's duffel bag, because we grabbed all the duffel bags, and we're all running there after him, and it's dark, and you can puff the smoke and explosions all around us, going off, because they have rocket, Thompson Air Base, and 
I can always remember that uh, the guy said, follow my light. He says, if you run outside, you're going to be shot. If you stick your head up, you'll be shot. I can, <laughs> to this day, I can, and I thought he was a Navy man. I don't know why I think that, but I, I think he was a Navy. And he said, you, uh, you come out and you're shot. You holler around, you're going to be shot. So stay inside your barracks. I'll get you in the morning. And he left us there all night. So we're scared, scared as hell. So I look over at a bunk, take a bunk, I unroll it, and there's a flak vest there. Flak vest weighs about 12 pounds or something like that. And that's what you put around you, to protect yourself from flak, you know, um, uh, bullets. And so I took that flak vest and I threw it over my head. And that's how I slept until about maybe 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I could hear about two, three guys crying. Because all these guys you're with, you're about 60 guys you're with, you don't know who they are. Because we all ran in the barracks and grabbed a, a, a bunk. And I can remember this. I, I, today, I kind of feel bad about this. But at the time, I thought I was doing right. I remember them crying. And I, uh, I hollered out, shut up. You know? And they quieted down. And, uh, as, and remember I told you about Thompson Newt? We landed there. You know? Mm -hmm. A lot of little things happened. Like that, and they shipped me off to another <coughs> replacement place, and uh, they put us in a bus. And I remember we're driving along, and we had armed guards on each side of the bus, uh, in front and back, you know, with the uh, uh, M16s. And there was mesh all the way around the bus to stop the grenades from coming in. And 20 of us, 25 of us, we run over, went over this hill, Cameron Bay. That was a Cameron. No. It was outside Da Nang, excuse me, it was outside of Da Nang, and there was a, I thought they had four little pigs hung up on barbed wire, strung with barbed wire wrapped around it, and I said to the guy, I says, where did they hang the pigs at, you know, and he says, they're not pigs, they're people, they caught sappers, sappers would come in and blow things up, they caught them, wrapped them up in barbed wire and hung them. The Omaha Tribe has an annual powwow to honor all veterans. This powwow is hosted by the Omaha Veterans Association. is important. Why do we always have eagle feathers? Uh, eagle feathers are, are sacred to us. Uh, the eagle was the high flying bird that goes to God, closest to God. And uh, in all our culture, just about every culture, I think except for the Cheyenne, Cheyenne used the hawk, but we use the eagle, you know, and uh, we, you know, as a, a tribe, uh, think the eagle is sacred. And uh, we mirror that. We take that uh, that feather and uh, pretend it's a soldier. It's a, a living being. And when it drops on the ground, the veteran has to pick it up. And there's different ways to pick it up. Different tribes pick it up differently. Different, uh, uh, you know, tribes. Uh, I've seen a tribe take a fan and pick it up like this. You know, this. Have you ever dropped a feather? 
Oh, yes, yes. That was my, you know, one of my worst things I ever did. In Lincoln, two years ago, I put a roach together, the dancing, you know, headdress. And I put one together, and I did secure it as I thought I had. And I fell off. I felt so bad. The whole headdress? No, the, just the feathers. That one feather fell off, but that's enough to stop it. And uh, it's the uh, only time I've lost it. Probably three years ago in Lincoln, Lincoln Powell, at the UNL. So they stopped it, and I prayed, and you know, and a guy came up, a veteran uh, from Vietnam, a Navy veteran came up, and I gave him the feather. I said, "Here, brother, this is yours. I've lost it. You know, I lost rights to this, so it's yours, brother." He was grateful. Then he sang me a song. He danced around, and people gave me money. I had a handful of money. I don't know. $112, $15, dollars, something like that. I could have, it was so big like that. And I went over to the drum and I laid it down on the drum and I told him, this is yours. I don't know how much is there, but thank you for that song. I was really sad. One of the worst uh, experiences I've ever had. That hurt me. You know better. You're, you're, I'm an elder. I should know better. I should check my stuff. I didn't do it that day. Plus, I put a new they call it a spreader with the feathers going to. I put a new one in there and I made a new one and I, was, I wanted to show it off. You know, so I just rushed and I shouldn't have done that. I, I know better. I know, you know, more than anybody not to do that anymore. So, so that hurt me. But that's the eagle feather. I'm glad you asked that. That's a good, good question. Why does a vet in pick up a feather? Because that's a soldier you're dealing with. We consider the uh, the feather, fallen feather, is a uh, fallen soldier. So a fellow soldier picks him up. I've never, some people have told me that uh, other people have picked it up, but I've never seen it in all my travels. I've probably been to 400 powwows. I've never seen anybody else but a veteran pick it up. You know, I've seen different ways, you know, people take uh, cornmeal, go around it like this, pick it up, you know. And then pick it up, and I see the fan, which I thought was pretty uh, cool. They took the fan and the feather raised up, and they grabbed it. And I see that uh, other people attack it, like they're attacking it. Uh, a veteran will pick four, or three other people with him, and they'll play that song, and they'll feel like they're attacking it like this. You know, they'll they'll go like that, dance around like that, and then pick it up. But you know, it's different, different tribes, different uh, methods.